I loved fish cakes growing up, so let's make my version. Hi everyone and welcome to Perima's Kitchen. I am Solina. Let's make fish cakes. You will need some fish and I'm using some deboned hake fillet. But you can use a can of salmon, tuna, whatever you like. We're not going to need a lot of spices. It's just half a teaspoon of jeera powder, half a teaspoon of dhania powder, some turmeric, ginger and garlic, thyme and we're going to need some lemon juice. I've got my salt, oil and breadcrumbs as well as green chilies, fresh coriander and fresh mint. We will need some eggs and I might use two, a couple of potatoes and an onion. This is my version so feel free to experiment with the different spices. I think as long as you add some fresh herbs it'll be delicious. So I got three medium sized potatoes on the boil. Your boiled potatoes is going to need the most amount of time so I just start with that first and you can leave the peels on. So for my fish I am going to slightly fry it and you can even steam it whatever you prefer. I'm adding some oil and I'll give you my reasons as to why I like to slightly fry it. It's still very very moist. If you're using hake fillet like myself ensure you dab it down with some roller towel before you add it to your hot pan and you want to keep the temperature to a very low to medium heat. Remember, I'm not frying it completely, it's just a slight fry. Next, I'm going to add about a level teaspoon of crushed ginger and garlic. Spread it nice and evenly all over your fillet. Thereafter, I'm going to add some thyme and this is just some dry thyme but if you have fresh thyme, you can go ahead and use that. Just take off the stems. My hake fillet was defrosted in the fridge overnight so if there's any water, it will start to release it slowly. Once I've got a slight sizzle, I start to add my lemon juice and you can use fresh lemon juice or bottled lemon juice is fine as well and you only need a little drizzle of lemon juice. So we're keeping the hake very simple in flavor. We've just added some ginger and garlic, thyme, lemon juice, and now I'm going to add some salt. And go easy with the seasoning because we will add a little more fine salt to our mixture. The hake is looking beautiful. I'm now ready to turn it over. And the reason I use this method is because I like to keep the skins on. And if you prefer to take it off, please take it off. And the reason I want to fry it slightly is so the skins get a lovely texture and taste. So first I'm going to make sure it's not stuck to the pan and then I'm going to break it in half so it can flip easily. And if you want to steam your fish, make sure that any excess water is evaporated. If you're using canned fish like tuna or middle cut, there's no frying or steaming needed. You can use it straight from the can. So once you flip over, we're only going to give it a few minutes literally on either side. Just so the fish can absorb any of those flavors on the pan. And then we're going to break up our fillet of hake until it has a beautiful flaky texture. So I don't know about you, but this reminds me of fish puttu. And to be honest, I haven't tasted fish puttu from anyone apart from Amma. And I'm pretty sure my mother's can't be compared to anyone else's. So that's it. Our fish component is done. I'm going to let it rest on the side while I see to the potatoes. Check if your potatoes are done with a sharp knife. It needs to just fall off very easily. You want it pretty soft. Once it's ready, remove the hot water and add some cold water. 
let your potatoes sit in the cold water for a few minutes and then you can peel it easily and if you want to keep the peels on do it i love potato skin peels as well so with your potatoes you can mash it if you want i do prefer sometimes to cut it up so it's chunky and it gives your fish cake a little bit more of a texture remember it's also going to get mashed up when you are doing your fish cake mixture once you're done cutting your potatoes you can proceed to then dice your onions your coriander your mint and your green chilies this also gives your fish and your potatoes some time to cool down and then we're going to start adding one ingredient at a time first is our beautiful hake which is lovely and flaky and already so flavorful next we're going to add our potatoes followed by our diced onions and you can make it as fine or as chunky as you like Green chilies is optional. I can't imagine having my fish cakes without green chilies. It really does give it a beautiful, beautiful taste. And that extra kick of heat is just what I love. And also remember, you can keep a portion without green chilies aside for the kids. Next, I'm going to add some of my spice. It's just a half a teaspoon of turmeric, followed by half a teaspoon of jeera powder. This is our cumin. Next, a half a teaspoon of roasted dhania powder, which is our coriander, and a half a teaspoon of crushed ginger and garlic. We're not going to add too much of ginger and garlic because we did add some ginger and garlic to our fish. Next, we're gonna add our fresh herbs, which is a must. It's half a bunch of fresh coriander, that's our dhania, and about a quarter bunch of your mint. Remember to remove the stems from your mint, we just want the leaves. And whether I am making my mince kebabs or my version of fish cakes, the fresh coriander and mint is what takes this to the next level. Add a little salt to taste, and then we're gonna get our hands in. Mix all the ingredients together with your hands, and this will also help soften the potatoes still keeping its texture a little bit uh, and just getting it all combined nicely so all the flavors are distributed evenly we are going to mix it some more but first i'm going to add one egg i beat my egg quickly with a fork and then add it straight to my mixture Mix again with your hands and your mixture will start to bind even more easily. Once we're done, we're going to start dividing our mixture. The portion sizes depends on how big or how small you want your fish cakes to be. So you can make smaller ones if you want little appetizers. My fish cakes will be on the slightly larger side today because I'm making fish burgers as well. Fam, if you're enjoying the video so far, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. It helps boost my video and the algorithm. Once you are happy with the thickness and the shape, you can proceed to do the rest of your fish cakes. So with my fish cake mixture, I was able to make approximately eight pretty large fish cakes. Once done, you can cling wrap them and put them in the fridge for about 30 minutes to keep the shape. I didn't do that, I just went for it. So I just added some oil to my pan. And I cracked another egg. Beat it with a fork. And you can use a wider bowl to put your egg in. I prefer to use this dessert type of bowl so I can easily dunk my fish cakes into the egg mixture and make sure that it's coated all around. 
I also use the breadcrumbs as I need it. I don't want to add everything to my saucer. Um, I don't like wasting any food. So this is the easier way of doing it for me. And then if you have extra left over on your plate and now it's already been touched by your fish and it's contaminated, you can't really use it. So I literally dunk the fish cake into the egg mixture on both sides and then straight onto the breadcrumbs. Pat it in a bit so it sticks. And you will find your own technique. Everybody has their own way of making their fish cakes. Try to just keep the shape and mold it in nicely. Don't forget some bread comes around the edges. And then use both your hands just to make sure that you have that perfect shape that you want. And you can then add it straight to your pan and make sure you have enough oil on your pan as well and you only need a couple of minutes on each side just to make sure that both sides are nicely browned remember all of your ingredients are literally cooked apart from the egg that you've added and with the heat it will make sure that everything is cooked you can also freeze your fish cakes after you've shaped them and whenever you're ready, you can pop them into the oven or the air fryer or on the pan. As mentioned before, you can make little bite-sized fish cakes and enjoy them as a starter or appetizer or as a main meal. We enjoy it with even butter bread. And they make awesome fish burgers as well. So this was Yavi's fish burger dinner. I couldn't wait. My mouth was literally salivating. As usual, all the ingredients and the quantities used will be found in the drop down description below. This is so tasty and full of flavor. Look at it, perfect. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Hit that notification mm. button so you are notified when a new video is uploaded. See you soon!